So hello everyone, welcome to the first session of our new series on sonal paths called the five minutes cardio time. I'm Peter Modler, I'm from Austria, as you can hear, I have a very strong accent, so please uh, excuse my accent. I'm running a referral center in Austria and my main fields are cardiology, interventional cardiology and cardiac surgery. And today I'm going to talk about the reason why the right-sided four chamber view is so important in canine cardiology. As I always say, cardiology is simple and it's logical. So this is the big advantage um, uh, compared to internal medicine or neurology, for instance. Why is it simple and logical? Because it's always about volumes and pressures and electricity. We're not going to talk uh, about electricity or EKGs or something today. So we are just talking about uh, volumes and pressures. So why is that position one of the ESTA protocol, the right parastonal four chamber view so important? Because you can see both ventricles and both atria. You can compare these structures and differentiate normal from abnormal findings. So if you look at the right side of the slide, you can see the right ventricle here. This is the left ventricle. Here's the right atrium. Here's the left atrium. This is the tricuspid valve. This is the mitral valve. The, here is the right ventricular free wall. Here is the interventricular septum. And there is the left ventricular free wall. And this is the interatrial septum. So every disease every significant disease in cardiology or canine cardiology will cause either volume overload or pressure overload or systolic dysfunction. Volume overload can be seen by ventricular enlargement. Pressure overload, at least if it's a chronic pressure overload, can be seen because it causes thickening of ventricular walls. Systolic dysfunction can be seen because of reduced wall motion. This can be estimated subjectively or by use of so-called emote or under other measurements. Some diseases cause combinations of all these changes here. But it's important that if you got the disease and this disease is hemodynamically important, it's very, very likely to cause volume overload, pressure overload, or this decreased systolic dysfunction. So if you see a normal four chamber view and you don't see any pericardial effusion around, yeah, and then, and you got a heart murmur, uh, then it's very unlikely that this heart murmur, independent from where it comes from, is of hemodynamic importance. And that is very important because you want to see yeah, I mean, the primary intention of an echo is to find out if uh, there is hemodynamic compromise, if there is a hemodynamic problem, okay? So, and this is the reason why you need to get a very good four chamber view to be able to recognize volume overload or pressure overload there, okay? Next time, in the next session, we're going to talk about how to get a very good view, to get the best four chamber view that can be achieved in a, in, a, in a specific dog. Okay. In order to be able to differentiate normal from abnormal, you have to know what is normal in a dog. Usually in a normal dog, the left ventricular free wall fits about 3.5 to five times into the lumen of the left ventricle in diastole. The right ventricle is usually much smaller than the left one. It, it, usually it fits about three times into the left ventricle. So usually the diameter is about 30%, sometimes 40% of the left ventricular diameter. The right ventricular free wall is about 50% of the left ventricular free wall. The septal thickness and the free wall thickness are almost the same. The interventricular septum is straight, also, the interatrial septum is straight. The right atrium is smaller than the left one. And if that's the case, then there is no significant volume or pressure overload there. Okay? So that's, this is really important. So on this sli slide, you see the more in motion. Again, the left ventricular free wall fits about 3.5 to 5 times into the left ventricular diameter in diastole. The right ventricular wall is about 50% of the left ventricular wall. 
The right ventricular di diameter is about 30 to 40% of the left ventricular diameter. The interventricular septum is straight, the interatrial septum is straight, the right atrium is smaller than the left one. So there is no sign of volume or pressure overload present. Again, we are not talking about arrhythmias. We are not talking about pericardial effusion. Also, you can see that the ventricles contract very well. We won't go in detail today about that. But again, there is no volume and no pressure overload present, OK? Abnormal findings would be left ventricular volume overload, right ventricular volume overload, left ventricular pressure overload, right ventricular pressure overload, systolic dysfunction of the right or left ventricle, left atrial enlargement or right atrial enlargement. So if you look at the left video here, this is a dog from a dog with severe mitral valve disease. You can easily see the ruptured corda here. Yeah, there's much space in between the valve leaflets. So this, even without any Doppler, you already see that this is a severe mitral valve disease here. And you can easily see the volume overload of the right heart. The left ventricular free wall fits about, I would say, 10 times into the, intervent, into the lumen of the left ventricle. The interventricular septum is not straight. The intraatrial septum is also not straight. The left atrium is much, 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 much bigger than the right atrium. And the right ventricle is much, much smaller than the left ventricle. So this is, of course, a, a case of a really severe left ventricular volume overload and left atrial enlargement. If you look at the video on the right side, you can see a case of right ventricular volume overload caused by a leaking tricuspid valve. This is tricuspid dysplasia. What you can see here is the septal leaflet of the tricuspid valve is tethered here, so the valve would not, would not close. What you can see is that the right ventricle is about the same size like the left ventricle. The right atrium is much larger than the left atrium. So this is right ventricular volume overload. On the slide, on, on the video on the left side of the slide, you see a case of supraortic stenosis causing, you can't see the supraortic stenosis here because the four chamber view, and you don't see the aortic, uh, aortic valve here. But you, what you can see here is that the left ventricular free wall fits about, I would say two times, maybe two and a half times into the lumen of the left ventricle. So with, with respect to the lumen of the left ventricle, the wall is too thick because of pressure overload. The heart is a muscle and it trains and get thicker if the, uh, the ventricle has to, um, has to push out the blood through its stenosis, okay? The interventricular septum is straight. Also the intraatrial septum is straight. What you, we can also see that the right atrium is smaller than the left atrium, but the left atrium is not really large. So the only finding here is the thickened wall of the left ventricle, left ventricular pressure overload. On the right side of the slide, you can see severe right ventricular pressure overload, easily seen by a really, really severely increased thickness of the right ventricle. So the right ventricular free wall is much, much, much thicker than the left ventricular free wall because it's hypertrophied. It's because the right ventricle has problems pushing the, blue, the blood out into the lungs. The reason was severe pulmonic stenosis, okay? You can also see fibrosis of the left ventricle. It's not a good sign. And uh, an enlarged right atrium compared to the left atrium. So this is a case of right ventricular pressure overload. All these cases are of hemodynamic importance because you see changes in the four chamber view. Can say, okay, these are important diseases that might potentially need some treatment. So why is the four chamber view so important? Because you can identify hemodynamically significant heart disease. You can identify volume overload pressure overload or systolic dysfunction. You can't see, you can't identify arrhythmias. Maybe you can, but it needs an EKG, of course, 
to specify them. So many thanks for listening and best regards from Austria. Um, I'm looking forward to, uh, uh, to the next session in, in the next month. Next time we are going to talk about uh, how to get a perfect uh, right parse to all 14 of you. Bye-bye and best regards.